Hello everybody and welcome back to another video and if you're new to the channel you are really welcome. I'm Jane and my husband Mike is behind the camera. We're British, early retirees, debt and mortgage free and living a thrifty, frugal and money saving life on a super tight budget here in Brittany in Northwest France. And every Wednesday we open our home and we invite you in for a midweek money chat. So let's take a look at the topic of self-reliance and frugality. When we look at self-reliance, we think about all of us doing as much as we can to live as independently as possible. And then we will look at frugality, we look at the very wisdom of how we earn money, how we save money, and how we spend money. And we do the, both of those very, very mindfully. So if I share with you that we live here in France, and France has one of the best social safety nets of any countries that I can possibly think of. But even that has its limitations. We have socialised medicine here, but even that has its limitations. I come from the UK, which has socialised medicines, and that too has its limitations. So when we think of self-sufficiency, we think of people owning their own land, owning their own property, uh, growing their own food, maybe hunting, maybe fishing, maybe preserving food, maybe canning. And that in itself isn't available to everybody everywhere. It definitely isn't available to everybody here in France unless you've got plenty of money to buy that type of land. It really isn't easily available in the UK, again, unless you have a very big amount of money to buy land, maybe to buy a small holding, any of those things. So it's not always available to everybody. However, I do want to talk through today sort of average, everyday frugality and self-reliance and those things that we can do to be self-reliant, to be less reliant on others. Now I want to add this in. There is nothing wrong with being part of society. There is nothing wrong with being reliant on others. And there's nothing wrong with others being reliant on us. It's, all of that is about humanity, isn't it? There is, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm also not saying that it is impossible to be more self-sufficient, that it's, it's, it's not impossible to grow your own food. And it's not impossible to find ways and means of fishing or hunting, for example. So I'm, I'm definitely not saying that, but I'm going to talk about everyday frugality and everyday self-reliance for average people like Mike and myself, and maybe you too, in our average world, wherever we may live. start off by talking about housing and this is a really big topic so I can literally just skate across the surface on this one but there is the point that needs to be raised at the moment we've got literally manufactured scarcity in housing we've got fewer houses being built in so many places in the world and that's created a real shortage of housing I'm thinking of places like Ireland and Australia where we have a real extremes haven't we of such shortages of housing. Um, I can, I'm sure you could name many other countries as well. So because of that, if you are in any position at all, and I absolutely accept the fact that some people are not, but if you are in any position at all to buy a property, you've really, really got to get it right. And I've got such a list here that I'm going to go through this and I'm, I'm going to have to read from my notes here. You really have to make sure that you get that location absolutely right because it could be cheaper a long way from your work and you'll be paying a huge amount of money for your fuel for your car. And we know, we absolutely know that fuel prices for cars has just shot up. It is, it, for some people, it's unaffordable. The commute is unaffordable. So making sure, and we've done this in the past, if you can, and I know it's not possible for everybody, to be where you have public transport, that you have those options available to you, where carpooling is available to you, and I know it's not possible for everybody, 
property is still a very, very good investment. It's not an investment if you go buying more properties, but your one property, it is still a very good investment. But you've really, really got to make sure that you get the property right. Please make sure, I mean, we always, as British people say, location, location, location. It is better to buy the worst house in the best area than the best house in the worst area. If a property has been on the market for a long time, or that property is significantly cheaper, buyer beware, really buyer beware. You know, check the crime statistics. Is this property going to be somewhere where there's antisocial behavior? Is it somewhere where you're never gonna be able to park because everybody from a nearby factory or workplace parks there and you come home from work, there's no parking. The other part of it these days is you really have to think of is can you work from home in that location? And because I'm in France, I'm gonna add this. Some properties in France are incredibly cheap for a big amount of reasons. There is no telephone reception and there is no internet. So wherever you go, get your phone out and check the 4G signal. Is there ever going to be 5G there? Are they ever gonna put in fiber optic there? Steer clear from the properties that really don't have that because you won't be able to work from home. Uh, would you be allowed, for example, to put a shed or an office in the garden? Does it even have a garden? Is there any outdoor space? Do you have to pay for parking there? Sometimes a property is cheap, but there's no parking, it's permit only parking. Are you allowed to run a business from home from there? Can you subdivide? Would you be allowed to subdivide? Would you be allowed to turn the garage into a granny annex? If you buy a rural property and you've bought it as a small holding, would you be allowed to put a yurt or a jeet in a shed there or turn the piggery or part of it into another property? Because some people have really come unstuck with this. They've gone to get planning and they've said, no, it's a national park. You're allowed to do zero, zero on this land. For example, we've got buildable land. We're not allowed to keep anything but domestic animals here. We won't be allowed to have chicken coops here. We won't be allowed to keep pigs or anything here or any animals here because it's buildable. It's considered town land. And then you might be able to go somewhere where it's rural land, but you're not allowed to build anything on it. So buyer, you have to really, really beware here. So if you are in the position to buy property at the moment and it is scarce, this you have to be so extraordinarily careful. When it comes to food now, because again, like the housing shortage, which is a manufactured scarcity, what we're getting with food now, again, is a manufactured scarcity. It is easier for the supermarkets to sell less and make as much money, if not more, by jacking up the prices. So what we've got now, if you as a person with food can run a good pantry, if you can build a store of food, if you are somebody who can grow some food, if you are somebody who can preserve food when it is cheap. An example, uh, we've got stores here that every now and then will sell a whole box of tomatoes for five euros. And you've got a whole box of tomatoes. If you know how to process those into pasta sauce or you know how to can those tomatoes and you can capitalize on that, you really are gonna get ahead. So if you can meal plan, if you can meal prep, what you've got at the moment is some kind of financial superpower because you have to be so self-reliant and equally frugal with this at the same time. We've already discussed not everybody can have land, not everybody can grow food, but you can be increasingly savvy with food. We know, we can, we can say for ourselves, the fast food outlets, they don't seem to be shutting down, do they? maybe they are but they're not round they're not from what i can see from my personal experience they're popping up all of the time so i'm going to refer to my notes here as well about food because 
what we what we are seeing well because i've already mentioned haven't i we've got this man-made scarcity haven't we and without going into too much detail and definitely without getting political what we're seeing is the forced reduction of some types of farms consequently some food types are going to be increasingly expensive and it will only be those with a lot more money than the average person who will be choosing what they have to eat so the rest of us are going to have to learn to be very very adaptable with the foods that we buy and how we cook it and that means we're going to have to try different recipes. We're going to have to try different types of food storage. We're going to have to be really, really smart with looking at more supermarkets. It may be that we are going to have to become the type of people who might have to start looking into buying wholesale, which is quite a new thing here. I mean, I did look up Costco here and that there's Costco in the UK. We you know it's big in the US. When I looked, I think it was just about only Paris from what I saw of it. But maybe it might turn into worth my while that we might do, you know, a once a year trip to go and buy things in bulk and get really savvy about these things as well. It might be that I might have to invest in quite a lot of food storage. I might have to turn part of my house into food storage. But whatever it is, we are all going to have to be a lot more self-reliant and a lot more frugal when it comes to food. It is not looking to reduce. When I say it's not looking, it does reduce, but it never ever goes back, does it, to being the affordable price that it was previously. We're now paying twice the amount of money for food that we did before 2020 that's not that long ago is it we and, and those prices keep going up so a bit more and a bit more and a bit more but when they come down it's pennies so as I said when it, all matters of food from can you produce any of your own food can you can of any of your food can you dehydrate and dry any of your food can you pickle can you make jam can you make preserves you know do you have space for another freezer are you going to have to look into saving up for that big annual shop that you buy things in bulk. We are going to have to be far more resourceful, far more self-reliant because that food scarcity and those food shortages, they're very manufactured, extremely manufactured. And the prices and the profits are growing all of the time. And the rest of us, we are going to have to adapt. thing and I'm going to sort of tiptoe around this subject because it is a difficult one and it's, it's got difficulties in every country in the world and when we look at self-care I'm going to talk about health care and I'm going to talk about specifically just as an example dental care. I think what we're seeing across many many countries in the world is health care becoming increasingly unaffordable. Even people who are paying hundreds if not thousands of dollars a month for health insurance still have to find a wad of money on top of that when they access health care and we're seeing countries in the world as well where there is socialized medicine and they're just not training as many doctors we're seeing we're just seeing fewer doctors we're seeing fewer dentists and because of that we're seeing less access to that. So if you're in a country where there is less access to that, it might mean you might have to travel once in a while to go and buy dental care. That might mean, for example, I'm gonna use the, the example of Mike and I here in France. We haven't done enough research, and it is, but it is on us to do this, to find dentistry elsewhere because we live in a very, very, very rural area. And here, for example, there is a shortage of dentists. So it doesn't matter that we are fully covered with private and social dental and medical insurance if the doctors and dentists don't want to come and work here. It is incumbent on us to be self-reliant 
to look elsewhere for that. And if that means we hop on a ferry, put our hands in our pockets and go to the numerous private dental practices anywhere in the UK, it means frugality and self-reliance is we have to budget for that. We have to put money aside for that. And we know with British friends and family, they're increasingly getting used to the fact that you can get healthcare if you pay for it. You can get dental care if you pay for it. And it is something you really, really need to put your hand in your pocket for and pay for. And that means you might have to save up to get the initial consultation and get all your, I'm talking dentistry here, get all your x-rays done, get your initial teeth cleaning done and getting your checkups done and getting a price for any work that you need to do. And then saying to them, look, realistically, that's gonna take me six months to save for that. So I'm gonna set that absolute target of making that appointment for six months time. And we have to be realistic about that. And like I said, it's something we're gonna to tiptoe over because it doesn't matter where you live now, doesn't it? It seems to be that healthcare almost everywhere is increasingly expensive. We know countries like Australia, we know places like Ireland, we know places like here in France, it's increasingly expensive. I know here it's in the hundreds and hundreds, it's not in the thousands and thousands, but it is still comparable with income expensive. So frugality and self-reliance, that is something that we're all gonna to need to budget for. If I was in the UK and I was still working and I needed dental treatment and I had to get a second job to pay for that, it would be needs must. It would be something that I would have to budget for. And, it, and it's increasing the case. And, and I know so many of you watching this are in America. And I know so many of you say all of the time, I can't retire yet because I can't afford the healthcare insurance. And it really, really is the case where people are gonna to have to say, you're gonna to need to put together an emergency fund in case you're gonna to need to have some massive dental work done and I'm just using dentistry as an example here because it can be extraordinarily expensive. So there we go. That is another case in point where frugality and self-reliant go hand in hand. We have to talk about finances, budgeting and self-reliance. So many of us who are watching this, we're thrifty and we're frugal, we get the best deals on everything. We know how to shop second hand, we know how to shop for sales. But if you are not budgeting every single month with a unique budget, something is gonna catch you out. And that's where the self-reliance comes in and the frugality and they're hand in hand, they have to work together is whatever you're doing with your budget, you really need to work on it and get better at that budgeting all of the time. Your car is going to break down. Your car is going to need new tires. It's going to need servicing. Your boiler's going to need servicing. Your air conditioning, your air purifier system, all of it is going to need replacing. Your fridge freezer, all of it is going to need replacing. These are things that we all need to budget for and that is the self-reliance bit. Do not wait for your bathroom to be so decrepit that it needs completely replacing. Know it's going to need work in three to five years time and set a financial budget and plan in place. We put a kitchen in in 10 years time. It's going to need some kind of upgrade in 10 years time. It might need new doors or it might need new worktops. It might need the plumbing adjusting in some way. It will definitely need a new dishwasher. And before then, it will probably need a new fridge freezer. It'll definitely need a new washing machine at some stage. And all of these things do not just come up. They are not surprises. We talk about that all the time on this because people say, well, what about those things that just come up? Those financial surprises? There aren't any. They're just the things we didn't prepare for. And being self-reliant when you're frugal, when you're budgeting means you are preparing for that. You are preparing for those things in the future. So you are setting up savings pots. You might call those sinking funds. 
you are saving for those long-term things that will need replacing. Kids will grow, grandchildren will grow, furniture will need replacing. And the other part of this is you really do need to be maximising on the self-reliance and getting ready because you are going to retire. Make sure by the time that you're retired or long before retired that you're debt free, long before you retired that you're mortgage free, even if that means you have to downsize to do that. Long before you retire, as soon as you start in the workplace, make sure that you are maximizing the savings that you can without paying tax on them. Really work on that and, and it's, it's incumbent on you to know that. Wherever you live, and I have looked into this, whether it's Australia, New Zealand, across Europe, in the U, into UK, which I know is part of Europe, of course, into the Americas, into Canada, all of those countries seem to have some kind of tax beneficial saving system for you to save full retirement. And at least 10%, up to 20% if you can. And that's the part where you have to start making quite massive sacrifices and it is easy it's easier to earn more money when you're young it's easier to go without stuff and be a bit more resilient and resourceful about that when you are younger do what you can whilst you can do it so there we go it's like I said you can be as thrifty and frugal as you like but if you haven't got that budget sorted organized and written down and you're not reviewing it on a regular basis, I promise you, something that you've not prepared for, something that you're not being self-reliant about will pop up and it will trip you up. To speak generally, when we talk about frugality and self-reliance, there needs to be an element of you and I being prepared to live differently. We have to be prepared to be the people who say, well, I'm not going to have takeaways, I'm not going to eat out, I'm not going to be buying experiences. Because at the moment, we have this massive thing in marketing about building memories, as if your life is an utter pile of tut if you're not water skiing, if you're not staying in a cottage in the countryside, if you're not going on beaches and renting a villa and all of those things. We know that's not true. We know life can be perfectly happy without doing those things. We, we know that because we're living it. We're living examples of it. So whilst everybody out there is spending money and leaving themselves broke, we need to do the opposite. We need in these times to be self-reliant, to make sure that we've got money for all the things that we need cost of rising cost of food, the rising cost of energy, the rising cost of health care, the rising cost of dentistry, the rising cost of everything from fuel to cars to keeping a roof over our head that we have to double down on the frugality and we have to double down on the self-reliance. And that means doing things differently. I'm not saying never eat now. I'm not saying don't ever eat a takeaway. I'm not saying don't ever get yourself a coffee but do not be like the herds the herds and the flocks of sheep doing it all of the time. Do it when you choose to do it, within your budget, when you want to do it. For the rest of us, we need to look at ways of building meaning into our life, affordably, frugally, and with our, within that realms of being self-reliant. And that means getting involved in local charities. That might mean getting in touch with conservation volunteers and doing stuff wherever it may be available to you. It might mean instead of taking money out of the bank and going on a big holiday, get yourself on a volunteering project for a couple of weeks where they feed you and give you board for nothing. You might be part of a historical restoration or part of a community project or part of somebody's private business but they're prepared to have you there as a volunteer, whether it's a chateau or a farm or a historical building or an organic farm or a community reforesting project, for example. Being prepared to do things very differently, being prepared to be part of community activities 
whether that's with your mosque, with your temple, with your church, with your non-religious organisations within your community, your community-run pub, your community-run post office or community-run shops, your community-run library, any of those events that you can be part of enrich your life. You do not need to be the part of the marketing where you go and spend, oh, I don't know, a week in Las Vegas watching the shows, much as though I'm sure it would be very, very nice. And I mean, if you do it, good luck to you. I'm not saying don't do it. But there are other ways of enriching your life with great experiences that do not cost money. I'm thinking locally here, people who volunteer with local charity shops and events that sort of spread out from that and the Christmas fairs and the Easter fairs and the events that happen from that that we can all be part of, which are great. They're enriching experiences. Look out for those things that are happening in your areas that are free or that are cheap, that again, enrich your life in one way or another. But be prepared to be different. Be prepared to be, and being self-reliant is about having the confidence to make those decisions, that even if you're living life as frugally as possible, that you're still enriching your really full and happy life. We have to get smarter and more creative all of the time. And like I said at the beginning of the video, nobody is coming to help us. Nobody's going to be knocking on your door checking to see that you've got enough electricity or do you have enough food to eat or are you warm enough? Nobody is coming. We have to be increasingly self-reliant and that means whilst we're young enough and we're fit enough that we absolutely have to prepare for aging in place. We have to prepare for our own retirement. We have to be prepared to look after ourselves and pay for our own healthcare. It's increasingly the case that we have to be frugal and prepared in every aspect of our lives to get by and to be very adaptable. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you're not a subscriber, go on, hit the subscribe button. We make three videos a week. We read all of your comments. We appreciate all of them. And we will see you again very soon. Goodbye for now.